Hello viewers, welcome to this video. Right, in this video we're going to see how to run Minikube in an AWS EC2 instance. So more importantly, it's about how to access your uh, Minikube dashboard from outside the AWS. Alright, so I've done a video on Minikube, how to install Minikube, how to use Minikube. And this time it's slightly different. So one of the viewer asked me uh, in my Slack channel, just me an open source, uh, this problem. So he has deployed Minikube in uh, in his EC2 instance, but um, he kind of struck a bar to how or how to access this dashboard from his laptop, right? So uh, this video is about that. So I've got an EC2 instance running in my AWS account. So I'm going to run Minikube and I'm going to run the Minikube dashboard as well and see how we can access it from my host machine here. So the basic idea is when you run Minikube and you have to enable the dashboard add-on. So Minikube add-on enable dashboard and then you can just type Minikube dashboard. So that will actually open uh, the dashboard in your web browser. But if that's only, if if that's happening, if that will happen, that will happen only if you're running on your machine, all right? So because you are SSH uh, into, you've logged into the EC2 instance using SSH, you won't be able to access the Minikube dashboard. Because the Minikube dashboard, uh, the Minikube exposes the dashboard on a particular port only to this EC2 instance while the Minikube is running, all right? So we won't be able to access it from our laptop outside of AWS. So that's the reason we are going to establish an SSH tunnel. So from our laptop, we are going to create an SSH tunnel to the EC2 instance and forward all the requests to the local host port 8081, whatever traffic we're gonna send to the local host port port 8081, it will be transmitted through this SSH tunnel to the other end, which is on this EC2 port 30,000. I'm just saying port 30,000, but Minikube will randomly give you the port number to access the dashboard. So by setting up this SSH tunnel, we will be able to access the uh, Minikube dashboard from any machine. Uh, the uh, requirement is you need to have an SSH connection to the EC2 instance where you are running the Minikube. All right, so that's uh, the theory part. Let's go ahead and do the actual interesting fun bit. Okay, so let me launch the terminal and log into my EC2 instance. Okay, so I'm using Amazon Linux 2 AMI uh, for this EC2 instance. If I do cat etc os release and you can see here it's amazon linux 2 i'm using amazon linux 2 and let me also open up the web browser to see how to install minikube it's damn simple you just download the minikube binary and then do minikube start that will um, install a kubernetes cluster install minikube okay so that's the first bit and for that um okay the other important thing is uh, we need to find out whether our machine is capable of running virtual machines inside because this Amazon EC2 instance is actually a virtual machine. So we need to find out whether we can run a virtual machine inside this virtual machine. So for that, we need to run this command. Most probably it won't have that uh, feature. If I paste that, there is no output, which means um, to check if virtualization is supported on Linux, run the following command and verify that the output is non-empty. So you need to see some form of output. Uh, that means virtualization is enabled, but here I don't see any output. It's an empty output. So which means nested virtualization is not supported in this EC2 instance. So what we are going to do is if you read the note here, but basically if you've got the nested virtualization support, when you run Minikube start by default, what it will going to, what it's going to do is it's going to create a new virtual machine and then install Kubernetes cluster in that virtual machine. Or you can use KVM if you want. If you've got KVM installed on your host machine, you can use Minikube start and pass minus minus VM driver is KVM. Because we are not having the virtualization capability on our EC2 instance, we are neither going to use VirtualBox nor going to use KVM, but we are going to install, we are going to let Minikube install the Kubernetes components on the EC2 instance itself instead of creating a separate uh, virtual machine inside our EC2 instance. All right, does that make any sense? It should. Okay, so 
if you want to run if you want to let minikube install kubernetes on the ec2 instance itself you need to pass this option minus minus vm driver equals none okay so for that one of the requirement is to have docker installed using this driver requires docker so first we need to install docker all right let's do that so if you are on amazon linux uh two instance there is this command amazon linux extras install minus y docker but if you are using any other instance just make sure uh, to install docker whichever way you prefer so docker is installed sudo systemcdl status docker okay that's disabled but before that i'm using the ec2 dash user the default user that comes with amazon linux 2 i'm going to add this user to the docker group sudo g password minus a to add the user ec2 dash user to the docker group okay that's done so i need to log out and log back in let me log out and ssh back into that machine so now if i do docker ps but before that i need to start the docker service sudo systemctl enable as well as start the docker service okay so that's running fine uh, I also forgot to mention one thing. So if you want to run the Kubernetes components directly on the EC2 instance using Minikube, um, you need to have at least two CPU and two gig of memory. So I've got two gig. I, th I think I chose T3 medium uh, for this EC2 instance type so that I have two CPU and two gig of memory, okay? Sudo systemctl status docker. Docker is running fine. Docker PS nothing docker version 18.09.9 docker info so everything is working fine so that's one of the prerequisite that's done so now let's go ahead and do the other thing install kubectl okay let's open that up we need to install kubectl i'm gonna copy that command copy and paste it so once that's downloaded, that's downloaded already, kubectl, change mod plus x kubectl, and then move kubectl to user local bin, which kubectl, we have kubectl, that's sorted out. We can close this tab. And now the next important bit is to install the mini cube binary. All right, so let's copy that command that command copies as well as downloads the minikube binary as well as uh, sets the execute permission on that binary. Paste that and we have minikube there. sudo move minikube again to user local bin which minikube minikube is there. Cool, that's it. So we've got Minikube, everything installed. So now we are good to start. If you just do Minikube start, it will use um, VirtualBox as the VM driver, but we don't have the nested virtualization enabled. So we need to pass minus minus VM driver equals none. All right, so let's do that. Sudo, I'm gonna become the root user because one important thing is if you want to use the VM driver equals none option, if you don't want to use KVM or VirtualBox, you need to be root in order to use the uh, the host machine, the EC2 instance itself. Okay, so which Minikube, Minikube version, okay, version 1.5.2. Let's start the Minikube cluster. Minikube start minus minus VM driver equals none. Okay, cool. So. I think it will take about five minutes and it's installing version 1.16.2. I'm going to pause the video here and come back when it's all complete. All right, that's completed. It took less than two minutes. Now let's see. kubectl is now configured to use minikube. Okay. ls.cube. Yep, there we go. We've already got a config cube config file. Now we should be able to use the kubectl command. kubectl get notes. Yep, we have got one node, kubectl cluster info. Yep, that's looking good. And if I do minikube status, minikube is running. And let's see what are all the add-ons we've got. Minikube add-ons list. 
So those are the list of add-ons that we can enable. For example, metric server, ingress, helm, heapster that's deprecated. And if you look dashboard, dashboard is disabled. So now let's enable dashboard. Minikube add-ons enable dashboard. Dashboard was successfully enabled. And if I do list again, you can see dashboard is enabled. And you can also see that in kubectl n cube system namespace cube system get pods uh, add-on manager no it's not listed here it must be somewhere okay ignore that how do you start um, how do you know the URL to access the dashboard mini cube dashboard minus minus URL so that's the command that's going to give you a command to access mini cube dashboard okay so it says the url to access the kubernetes dashboard is this one and if you look the url here it's 127.0.0.1 which is localhost so it can be accessed if you've got a remote desktop connection if you've got a, a graphical environment into your ec2 instance you can open a web browser and you can just go to uh, this url but unfortunately this is a server environment so ec2 server and we have logged into that ec2 instance using ssh so how would we from my local machine here from my local laptop here how would i access uh, the ec2 instance uh, to access the dashboard mini cube dashboard so that's um how we are going to do using the ssh tunnel so if i open up another terminal i'm going to create an ssh tunnel and the command is the same command that i used to log in ssh minus i i'm passing the identity file my private key ec2 user at my public ip address of the ec2 instance but before that i'm going to pass minus uppercase l for setting up the tunneling and i'm going to say 8081 on my local host here if i send any traffic to port 8081 on my local host here send the traffic via this ssh tunnel that i'm creating to the port which is 42523 42523 inside the ec2 instance all right that's it so don't close this terminal don't don't close this ssh session that's needed so that's the ssh tunnel we are going to use so now from our machine if we send any traffic to port 8081 that will be sent to 42523 on that ec2 instance so now we should be able to access the dashboard so it's that simple, just create your SSH tunnel and then you can pass your traffic through that SSH tunnel. And if I copy that link and paste it in my browser, it won't work because we need to change the port number. In our local host, the port is 8081. And if we send that to 8081, it will be sent to 42523 on the EC2 instance. Let's change that. 8081 and there you go so that's our kubernetes dashboard that's it cool that's all i wanted to show you in this video thanks for your time watching this video if you've got any questions or any issues following this video please let me know and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel i will see you all in my next video Bye bye